Hi everybody, welcome to the video on phase changes. Now, look at this great picture. Every year in Wisconsin we see this. We see that lake's freezing over. And if I look at this through the eyes of a chemist, this is cool, like liquid is changing phases into a solid. Um, and that's the macroscopic version. But if, as a chemist, I always want to look at the microscopic version. So what's actually happening for that liquid to turn into a solid on the particle level? So that's what we're going to get into today, is how that actually happens in a lot of detail. So to do that, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, probably should be your favorite type of diagram ever. These are phase change diagrams. Oops, got to get an E on there. This should become your best friend. If you know how to read this, it's going to help quite a bit with your understanding of those particles on a microscopic level. So let me give you a couple tips to orient yourself to this diagram. Down below on our x-axis, there's time. <clears throat> Over here we have temperature. Um, and so I'm going to do the most common example of water. Um, you'll notice in a little bit uh, why this will be zero degrees Celsius. And if I follow this flat line over, it would be 100. Again, we're doing this for water. So as I write things down, feel free to fill out your sheet as well. All right, so a couple of other things. You'll notice as time goes on, temperature is increasing here on this line. However, it's staying constant while time goes on on this line. Increasing, constant, and increasing. <clears throat> and so I'm going to draw a big red arrow up here. And so this red, these red arrows represent when, when um, energy is being added. And so in our case, that temperature is going to be heat. But on the other side, I'm going to change colors to blue. We can do the same kind of thing. We can decrease temperature, but it still stays constant here. Decrease temperature still stays constant here and decrease temperature here. So I can add that arrow down below. This would be energy removed. And so we are cooling things down. Okay, so we can look at both directions on a phase change diagram. So let's get some of those wonderful phase change words up here that we need to be able to talk the lingo. So I'm going to switch back to just a regular color. I'm going to choose green. So we need solids, liquids, and gases up here because those are our three phases. So I'm going to draw the particles. Um, I'm going to draw it kind of here. I'm going to draw my solid. The particles are super packed together and they're very organized. So that's solid. You can label that as a solid. Um, let's see. I'll do it over here, wherever you have room. And then the particles are a little less packed together, a little less organized for a liquid. And then the extreme, farthest apart, most unorganized for a gas. And notice temperature can increase or decrease when each of these phases is set as is. But now we're almost done with our vocab. So we're going to go down below and switch colors back to red. <clears throat> so we'll add energy. So if we increase the temperature, if this is water, when the temperature is hot enough at zero degrees Celsius, that solid, that ice, is going to say, oh, wait, hold on. I gotta stop. I gotta start melting here at this particular about this particular temperature. I'm gonna start changing phases. So on this flat line, temperature doesn't change, and it's actually gonna be some solid and some liquid. It's gonna be two phases for that period of time. But once we've entirely made our way into liquid form, temperature is gonna start to increase. And then, oh, hold on, we reached 100 degrees Celsius. That liquid's gonna say. I gotta start changing phases here. I have to start evaporating. 
into a gas. So you may refer to this also as boiling. And so it's going to be a liquid and a gas through that time period. And once we have all gas, the temperature can start to increase again. And if we go switch colors back to blue, we can do the same things down here. This would be the reverse of evaporating is condensation. I wanted to write condensing. Oh, well. And that would be from a gas to a liquid. And then down here would be freezing. Okay, so that's our phase change diagram. If you know this diagram and it makes sense, it's going to make a lot of what we do in chem in this unit a lot easier. Now let me just summarize a couple of things and then we'll move on. So I'm going to stick with, what color am I writing with? Blue. So down here we're going to write three different things. So we're going to write what happens when we decrease the temperature and we'll do we'll write the word phase change, but again, all my colors are done on purpose. I'm going to write this other half of the word in red. And then over here, when we increase 10. Okay, so temperature really is the speed of the particles. So if we are increasing the temperature, we are going to increase the speed of the particles. And if we're increasing the speed of the particles, we're, I mean, we're increasing the temperature of something. On the other hand, <clears throat> the reverse is true over here. If we lower the temp, that means the particles are going to start to move slower. We decrease the speed of the particles, and that's just going to make the temperature lower. And so these can happen only when the phase is set as one. If it's a solid, a liquid, or gas, we can increase their temperatures or decrease them. It's only when we hit those particular milestones, so for water it's 0 and 100. For any other substance, they have their own melting and uh, boiling points. Uh, the phase is, the, the temperature is used to do something else. Okay. So phase change, temp stays, and I'm going to use arrows here, it stays constant. Those are bad, they're supposed to be symmetrical arrows there. So the particle speed is no longer changing. Instead, the temperature is going to change its focus. It's going to do one thing at a time. It's going to say, all right, I can't increase or decrease the speed of these particles because I've got to change their state their phase. So the temperature stays the same, and instead of changing the particle speed, the temp changes the particle connections. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. So without further ado, here we go. First, um, one thing I said on the previous slide is temperature does not change during a phase change. So you can go ahead and flip over your sheet. You'll see this exact claim here. Now, let's think about that here. So if we go from a solid to a liquid, right? So we go, I believe that would be melting. A true chemist can tell me why this is. Why does the temperature not change from a particle perspective? So let's think about this. First, how are the particles arranged in a solid versus a liquid? Well, you can see, organized, tightly packed versus not. So then, how are the particle connections or interactions compared? Well, in a solid, these, these interactions are pretty much pun intended, set in stone. Whereas liquids can kind of roll around each other, they can reform particle connections, they can break them, reform, break, reform, they're almost kind of just rolling about very fluidly, hence liquids. So notice the difference between a solid and a liquid. So now my last question is, the only thing temperature can be doing during a phase change is changing those interactions between particles. Hang with me. So if we add heat, 
It's changing the interactions between the particles. It is not changing how fast those particles move. Okay? It's changing the interactions from what they were like as a solid, very permanent, versus a liquid, very fluid and changing. So bottom line, temperature or heat can only do one thing at a time. It cannot multitask. It can either say, I'm going to be used to change the phase of that substance, or I'm going to be used to change the temperature of that substance. So I'm going to either focus on how fast the particles are moving or their intermolecular interactions. I can't do both. can't do it. Keep that in mind. I want to say it again because this is so important. Temperature is how fast those particles are moving. Temperature can't change during a phase change. It can't influence the speed of particles. It can change, though, if it's in a set phase. If you're a solid, you can change temperature. If you're a liquid, you can change temperature, too. But keep in mind, the temperature is used for different things, then. If it's in a phase change, it's used to break or form those interactions between particles. But if it's during a particular phase, it's being used to speed or slow particles. That's it. So one final claim I want to break down again. I said it, temperature, the only time it will change is if it's in one set phase. If it's a gas, a liquid, or a solid. Nowhere in between. And so why is that? We look at what temperature's the role of temperature. And if we apply energy or remove it for cooling down, that energy is going to alter the speed. It's not going to alter the connections because we're not changing a phase. So if you need to write anything down, feel free to pause the video. But bottom line, Take this oath with me. Repeat after me. Matter can only do one thing at a time. Change phase or change temperature. Energy can either attack particles or connections, but not both at the same time. So next time, in the winter, in the coming months, as you see the lake slowly start to freeze over, the, the rivers near you start to freeze over, think about on a microscopic level what's happening. That temperature is remaining constant and those interactions are going from a, a liquid more to a firmly connected, tightly packed solid. Hope you enjoyed and happy ice fishing.